Hello, everybody. I thought today we'd just talk a little bit more about vaccines, the, the coronavirus vaccines. I think we could label them home runs. Uh, definitely home runs. And let me just kind of explain why I say that. I don't know if it's, it's the beginning of the baseball season also now, so it just seems like it fits together. What's the most important attributes of a vaccine against the coronavirus? To me, it's to prevent death, prevent hospitalizations. Yeah, we'd like to prevent everything, any symptoms at all, any evidence of disease. You can prevent those two things, that, that does the job. So that's why I'm saying they're home runs because they do that. The three authorized vaccines, there have been no hospitalizations and no deaths. That's pretty remarkable, particularly what we've been through for the last uh, 12 months now. We're taping this on uh, March 10th, really the beginning of the pandemic here in the United States. Let's get a little few specifics. Let's we'll start with the Pfizer uh, BioNTech uh, vaccine. Uh, they immunized, they had a huge, huge trial when you think about it. Um, 22,000 people got the vaccine, 22,000 got the placebo. Think about the logistics of putting that together. Uh, but they did. and. Uh, and then they had a set of endpoints that were set, set up way in advance. And I'll come back to that later on. But the basic endpoint was um, who got symptomatic disease beginning after the second, remember the Pfizer vaccine is two doses, uh, separated by 21 days. They said, okay, we'll wait two more weeks. Sorry, one more week, seven days. And, uh, and then from that point, we'll measure how many people got uh, overt infection, symptomatic infection in the placebo group and in the, uh, in the vaccine group. And the answer was, in the vaccinated group, there were eight. And in the placebo group, there were 162. Eight and 162 were 95 percent efficacy for that particular endpoint, which was, again, symptomatic disease proven. Um, now, what if we look at the at, the, at severe? Um, in the vaccinated group, there was one. See, there's an asterisk there. I'll come back to that in a second. And in the placebo group, there were nine. So one versus nine. Why the asterisk? Well, I got this data and the ones that will follow right off the FDA website. So it's the FDA's analysis of the company information, company's data. And they follow the rules exactly. This one person fell into the category of severe. But if I understand it correctly, actually wouldn't have been severe if their oxygen saturation had just been one point higher, just one point higher, they would have fallen off. It would have been no severe infection. Anyway, it's trivia, but I thought it was kind of interesting. Now here's a chart. You've probably seen this before. I've shown it before. And it is the cumulative uh, increase in cases after the first dose, at the zero time is the first dose. So what you see is uh, the placebo is the one that goes up high and the vaccine is the one that stays down. Uh, you see that starting with the first day, they both go up together. But after about day 10, that's when the vaccine one levels out. And there's just hardly any new infections after. There are some, but not a lot. So that's the, uh, that, that's the graphical way of looking at it, which I find uh, very helpful. It really shows the difference between the two. Uh, placebo versus vaccine. Now let's go on to the Moderna. Again, this is the FDA's analysis of the information. Uh, their uh, vaccine is given a little differently. It's given on day one and day 28. So it's four weeks instead of three weeks. And then their measurement was any infection that occurred two we after two more weeks. In other words, when the immunity should be at its peak. So let's look at those numbers. Well, first of all, the number of volunteers, another huge, not quite as big as uh, Pfizer, but 30,000 volunteers, 30,000, uh, pretty much equally divided between vaccine and placebo, 15,000 each. So now, symptomatic infections for Moderna, the vaccinated group 11, and the uh, placebo group 185, 11 versus 185. So a 94% efficacy. If you want to say that that's any different from, from Pfizer, you can, but I think you can say it's really the same. Now, what about severe infections? None in the vaccinated group and 30 in the placebo group, including one death. So a, a pretty marked difference here. Now here's the chart, looks like the other one. It starts with day one, 
uh, time zero is when the first dose is given, and then you see the placebo group, you know, just keeps going up, and the vaccine group goes up for the first few days, and then it flattens out. And just like the Pfizer group, uh, it, it just stays that way. It raises an interesting question about, could you give just one dose? And remember, you can't tell from this. All you can tell is that after that first dose, 10 days later, it flattens out. But these people all got the second dose. So you don't know if it would have stayed flat with the one dose. An interesting thing, though, just to mention it for a moment, in the United Kingdom, uh, they're taking the approach that one dose may be enough to start because they want to see if they can get more and more people vaccinated with the first dose. So they're holding back that second dose and saying, we're going to give it to you, but 12 weeks instead of uh, four weeks. Because by that time, we'll have, many, we'll have much more vaccine available and um, uh, we'll have had many more people that have gotten that first dose. So we think we'll be ahead. There's a lot of debate as to which is right. And I think the answer is nobody knows for sure. Uh, but both have, the argument can go either way. So let's see. Um, the next one is the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Uh, it was just, uh, just approved about 10 days ago. It has the advantage, it only requires normal refrigeration, and it's a one-shot uh, vaccine. So they did, again, a large study, about 20,000 volunteers in each arm, placebo versus vaccine. And it was done in the United States, in Brazil, and in South Africa. And that's going to prove to be important in a moment when we look at the information. So the definition here is a little bit different than the other two. It's, it was how many people got moderate to severe infections in the two groups. And the answer was vaccinated 116 and placebo 348, which gives us a 67%, two thirds efficacy overall. So you're going to say, well, it's not as good as the other two. And on the surface, that's the case. But let's look at, again, the, the severe infections and deaths, deaths in particular. None in the vaccinated group, seven in the placebo group, and no hospitalizations in the vaccinated group either. So yes, there were uh, people that got sick, or got symptoms, I should say, but they didn't end up in the hospital. So again, if the key for you is hospitalizations and deaths, Johnson Johnson vaccine is terrific, absolutely terrific. Here's the graphic. It's uh, essentially the same as the other one. Uh, you see how, again, the placebo keeps going up. Actually, it looks like it flattens up and then goes up again. And the, uh, uh, and the vaccinated group, it just kind of keeps edging up a little bit. Keeps edging up a little bit, then seems to sort of flatten out. So again, to re be repetitive, with these three vaccines that have been authorized by our FDA, there have been no hospitalizations and no deaths. So that's my term for the home run, if you will. Now, let's look at some of the other vaccines that are out there um, that may be approved here soon. The first one is the one that was developed at Oxford University in England. And that team uh, teamed up, if you will, with the huge uh, British pharmaceutical firm AstraZeneca. And, uh, now we don't have FDA analysis because they haven't brought their data to the FDA for approval yet or for, back, for authorization yet. But uh, they did publish uh, an article in The Lancet. That's the major British journal. It's read worldwide, highly respected. Um, and that was back in, uh, I forgot when it was, in, in the late fall, December. And this was their interim analysis. So the overall efficacy is 74%. So like Johnson & Johnson, it's not quite as high as the Pfizer and the Moderna. Um, but again, hospitalizations is zero versus uh, 10 in the placebo group and one death in the placebo group. So again, the early data here from the United Kingdom, this is where this study was done, uh, shows that again, no hospitalizations, no deaths. So it's really doing the job. And this is uh, despite the fact that in the United Kingdom that has that, uh, that British variant uh, 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 or, or, or mutation, uh, which is much more transmissible, but apparently isn't any more uh, 
doesn't it doesn't cause any more serious ill the illness is no more serious than with the original one but it is tra transmitted much more easily in any event it's been quite effective against that variant uh, as well as the, the original variant. Now here's the graphic. Now again, it's not done by the FDA, so it looks a little bit different, but you get the same idea. This is what was published in the Lancet. Uh, you can see the difference between the placebo and the, uh, uh, and the vaccinated group. And in this case, they show what they call the standard deviations around both lines, just to give you that sense. So clearly, though, a difference. Now there's another vaccine that is moving along, and I, well, let's go back to Oxford, uh, Zeneca, uh, AstraZeneca for a second. They are in, in doing a big 30,000 volunteer study in the United States and Mexico. And when that's completed, they will bring that to the FDA uh, to look for authorization in this country. But for now, that vaccine has been authorized in the United Kingdom, in uh, the European Union, and by the World Health Organization. So it's really being used uh, a lot of places around the world. Now, Novavax is a drug company, very small drug company, in Gaithersburg, Maryland. And about a year ago, or a little bit more than a year ago, uh, they, were, they were hurting. They didn't have much money, and nobody was paying attention to them. Uh, and along came the coronavirus, and they figured out uh, how to make a vaccine and they did it and they became part of operation warp speed which i'll do in a separate show um, and here's where they are so far they have a trial going on in the united states also but the one in uh, the united kingdom uh, had 15,000 participants and at a time when there was a lot of transmission of that uk variant by the way so let's look at some data from that um, the vaccine group got six uh, infections. Placebo group got 56, so six and 56. So an overall 89%, sounds really good. It's interesting though, if they, they broke it out by those who got infected with the original uh, strain of the virus, and there it was 96% effective, whereas with the UK strain, it was 86%. Well, 86% is pretty darn good also. Now, they also did a study in South Africa, and you know over there there's that strain of the virus which uh, it, there's a lot, of, a lot of concern about. And so let's see what happened there. Vaccine group 15, placebo group 29, or about a 60% efficacy rate. And they found in that study there that most of the infections were with that South African strain. So if that's the case, and again, it's still early information, and it's not quite as good against the South African strain, but, but, that's a big important but, again, no hospitalizations and no deaths. So it's looking really pretty good. There's some other companies out there that are working along and they are sort of a little bit behind. One's Innovio, an American company. Uh, they will get their phase three studies started in the next month or two, next couple of months. Uh, they got slowed down in the fall. I'm not sure exactly why. They got put on hold and the FDA gave them uh, permission to move ahead in the last couple of months, so they are doing that now. And there's another big company, Sanofi, uh, which teamed up with GSK, which is GlaxoSmithKline, another huge uh, uh, international pharmaceutical firm. Uh, they have a couple of candidates, an, M M an mRNA virus and a, uh, a protein uh, vaccine. Uh, like the like the Novavax vaccine, and they are, if you want to use the term behind, they haven't started their phase three trials yet, and they probably won't for a number of months. So, um, if Novavax works out, uh, it will be coming in in the next uh, uh, few months, and the uh, Sanofi GSK probably late summer, early fall, if that all works out. So. From what we know now, three authorized by the FDA vaccines, and, um, and I think it's kind of fair to say that uh, the AstraZeneca, Oxford AstraZeneca and the Novavax vaccines are certainly looking the same way. They look like they're all home runs. Thanks very much.